Okay. That's all I got. Holy. In today's video, we are doing a lactate threshold test. We're gonna go over the goal of the submax test, how we structure and set up the test, as well as the results and application for Ironman training, as well as marathon training. And lastly, we're gonna talk about the differences between these two lactate meters. I tested out both of these and they gave me a little bit different results, so we're gonna dive into that as well. The goal of this lactate test is pretty simple. It's to identify the first and second lactate threshold. Now, I've written more about this in my weekly newsletter, so check the links in the descriptions to learn a little bit more, but I'm primarily concerned with training at the right intensity. We're training at and below that first lactate threshold. We're primarily using fat as our fuel source, which is really important for Ironman training. In fact, three key things are happening when we are at this intensity. The first thing is that we actually get more mitochondria. You can develop and build more mitochondria, which are like the little power plants in our cells to help us get more energy for endurance sports. The second thing is that we increase the amount of capillaries that we have. So those are like our little blood vessels in there that deliver the oxygen, like the raw materials to those power plants. So not only do we have more power plants, but we also have a better delivery system for the raw materials. And then the third thing that's really, really important here is that it has a really fast recovery rate. When we're at this training intensity, we can recover really, really quickly, which means that we can do a lot of training volume and come back the next day and then do a lot more volume. Training volume is the number one predictor in success in endurance sports, especially marathon and Ironman. So that is really, really, really important. Second lactate threshold is really important because it's basically our maximum mitochondrial oxidative capacity. When we use carbohydrates as a fuel source, lactate is produced as a byproduct. Now that lactate can actually be shuttled back and reused by the aerobic system, but only up to a certain point. Once we've reached this second lactate threshold, we can't reuse that lactate as fast as we are producing it, which means that the increase in fatigue and acidosis that we feel in our muscles is going to accelerate really, really quickly. Training just at and under this number is really important for a couple of reasons. The first is that our FTP or our functional threshold is the theoretical number that we can sustain of either power or pace for an hour. Now, in reality, a lot of us can't do this for an hour. We can only do it for about 30 to 40 minutes because we haven't trained at that intensity to have the stamina to be able to sustain that for an hour. So the closer the race is to that threshold intensity, the more important it is to spend a lot of time right under it. This is also a really important number to know because when we go above this intensity, we're working on kind of the wrong energy system, at least when it comes to endurance sports. Now, there are some benefits of going a little bit faster sometimes, but it shouldn't come at the expense of having to reduce the training volume. Because again, that's the number one predictor of endurance sports. So when we're thinking about speed work or above threshold work, the dose really makes the poison or the medicine. So the way that this test was set up was a baseline measurement before we even began, and then a 30 minute warm up at 100 watts, which is less than 50% FTP and just a really, really easy intensity. We wanna start low so that we really capture that first lactate threshold, that first uptick. After the 30 minute warm up, it is 10 minute steps increasing at a interval of 25 watts in each step, which is roughly about 10% of FTP. Most of the time when you do these types of tests, people recommend like a three to five minute interval, which isn't necessarily bad, but it takes a little bit of time for the aerobic system to start shuttling that lactate and reusing that lactate at each new level of intensity. So if you cut the interval short and test too early, you might be looking at a slightly lower number of lactate than is actually corresponding with that intensity. Then from there, you just go until it gets really, really challenging. It's a submax test, so you don't need to go all out. Again, the only things that we're really trying to find out here are where that first lactate threshold is and the second lactate threshold is. Not really concerned about the maximum am amount of lactate that I can produce. If I was maybe doing like an 800 or a 400 as my A race of the year, that's where that would maybe come into play. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Alright, now that we got it all set up, we're gonna do one test on each one as just kind of a baseline. Um, and then we'll test again after the first 30 minute warm up. So, see how each one of these goes. All right, so first comparison, yeah, 0.9 on the Nova, which is great, to 0.7. All right, we'll see how it goes. Okay. That's all I got. Holy. Let's look at these results. They're pretty interesting to have the two different lactate meters going at the same time. Here is the raw kind of data along with the corresponding graph of what that looks like as we stepped up in intensity. The second interval using the edge was uh, I had to redo it because I didn't quite get enough blood. That's kind of the main drawback of using the Edge versus the Nova system, um, is that the Edge requires a little bit more blood, and so when you're self-testing especially, it's hard to get enough, and you kind of end up having to burn through a couple strips. You have to push your finger, uh, push the blood up through the finger, which tends to elevate the reading. After that, it went back down and was kind of normal from there on out. So important things to consider when we are looking at this data, two millimole and four millimole are generally speaking where those two thresholds are. People might suggest that one and a half is closer for the first lactate threshold and then three to three and a half being closer for the second one. But again, it's totally individual. The other thing to remember here is that these are lines in the sand. They are moving targets. Heart rate and lactate both fluctuate based on heat, stress, fatigue, etc. So every time you do one of these tests, it's just another data point. It's something to consider to inform your training, but it's not set in stone. There's a lot of ways to use and interpret lactate data. Uh, but I'll share how I'm planning to utilize it, especially for my marathon training. First and foremost, the most important application, in my opinion, is spending time 
at and below lactate threshold one. I'll be doing the vast majority of my bike rides under 200 watts and under 150 beats a minute. This corresponds pretty well to other tests that I've done on the bike and in the run in the past. Really, the goal here is to focus on building the mitochondrial and capillary density needed so that I can recover quickly while putting in a really big training volume. If biking a ridiculous amount can work for Nils Vanderpool, who is the Olympic speed skating champion in a 12 minute speed skating race, then certainly it has applications for a marathon and Ironman distance races. The other main way that I'll be using this information is to spend a lot of time at and below that second lactate threshold for two main reasons. The first being that the marathon is somewhere between 90 and 95% of lactate threshold. So it'll be very metabolically similar as well as the marathon's gonna be roughly 165 to 175 beats a minute. So from a cardiovascular standpoint of how many times my heart is pumping and how fast it's pumping, it'll be also very similar from that standpoint as well. Doing key workouts at that intensity level will help the energy system and the cardiovascular system be prepared to go for that two and a half hour race at that intensity. So lastly, the differences between these two, this one gave a slightly higher reading, but I had to work a little bit harder to get the blood out. Pushing through my finger tends to elevate the amount of lactate uh, in the reading. In reality, I'll probably stick with this one for self-testing just because this one is a little bit more cumbersome. That being said, although the numbers were different, the shape of the curve and the inflection points weren't drastically different and didn't give me all that much of different training zones or application. But either way, it's not about chasing a specific lactate number, but about noticing how the curve shifts over time. Until next time, happy training.